Matt, I know science is true. It doesn't mean everything about science is currently true, but the process gets to truth. Uh, and I'd like theology to be true in some sense, maybe any sense. Uh, so obviously I have to hope for some sort of harmony. And one of the ways that, that uh, philosophers of religion and theologians have uh, sought to create this consonance is that some theological doctrines have to change in order to conform to the science. Uh, it, you can't live in, in, in a vacuum, you have to recognize the science. So I like to look for those theological doctrines that are pressured mm -hmm. by science, and especially if they're core doctrines, and see what happens to them. Now, one of the things I've heard you work on is original sin. Now, that's a pretty powerful part of the canon of Christianity in general and Catholicism in specific. Um, and that's pressured by evolution. So as a theologian, how do you deal with it? Right. Um, well, I think one of the things to do is to go back and see what is the original point of the doctrine and some of doing the history of it. Um, you know, probably the if you round up the usual suspects, it's um, <clears throat> the... Um, the story of Adam and Eve, but of course in Jewish thought, the story of Adam and Eve doesn't have anywhere near the prominence that it does in Christianity, right. and that's probably due to, Saint, uh, to Paul and the letter to the Romans. Um, but even within Christianity, um, it was Augustine who, who made it a central point. But, but I think what needs to be distinguished is the, the, the core insight that it's trying to convey and then the, the biblical narratives and the texture that it's using to do that. And, and I think the core insight, particularly in Paul, is, is this deep paradoxical sense that we have of, you know, as Paul put it, I don't do what I want to do. I do the very thing that I don't want to do, um, you know, which any parent or any spouse has had that experience. You go into a meeting. But, but even more um, that in some ways it's where we are most powerful and, and most successful that that um, we're, we're most at risk. And, uh, <clears throat> and so the, what the doctrine of original sin tries to do is to capture that paradoxical character that we have. Now, the, the issue is then it linked it to a certain reading of the Adam and Eve story, and you right. talked about pressure, and boy, yeah, a lot of pressure yeah. there, um, even on the idea that there was an original couple. And, and so what I try to do as a theologian is try to say, um, can we... Can we respect the biblical narratives? And, and here I actually follow a philosopher named Paul Ricoeur, who said that the problem is we, we've simplified even the, those stories in Genesis 1 through 3 and lifted out a very caricatured story. And, um, and can we do justice to that underlying sense of um, the, the paradoxical character of, of human action, that, that there is something that, um, that we need to be redeemed from? And that's really what the doctrine is trying to do. But to disentangle it from, um, from, from a particular reading of that historical narrative is not easy to do. It's a lot harder to do that than it was for the Galileo affair to reinterpret a few passages. Sure, sure. I mean, this is, then this the original sin is, is very fundamental because it's not just, it's just, just a, a, this internal contradiction. Original sin says something, I mean, it, 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 it it creates a causal direction that that originally the, 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 the in Eden these this couple was sinless and would have lived forever or whatever mm -hmm. would have happened and then something happened that affected the the, the physical expression of this so their their emotions they're able to die a whole series of things so do you um, uh, uh, make those allegories and metaphors in order to maintain the idea but 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 eliminate the literalism yeah i think you have to find a way to get at what what is what are what is the story really trying to express and and the, it's trying to express in a sense that you know it's sort of the opposite of consonants right we don't feel at home in the cosmos there's something you know the estrangement from the natural world um or that the relationships, even with those whom we most dearly love, seem to have a kind of a brokenness in them. And, and that had come about, why? Because the original sin story tells us why that came about. If, that, if, if, if the feeling that we have, this, this dissonant feeling that we have, uh, if that comes about through evolution or through some random social activity interaction, um, you know, that's one thing. But, but that, that seems to change its whole character. 
of, of, of the result of original sin. So if, if you have a different origin, a different uh, etiology of it, doesn't, doesn't that change the whole character? Well, yeah, so the distinction is between originating original <laughs> sin and yeah. original sin as a situation in which we find ourselves. And probably the easy part of the doctrine is to say, look, we find ourselves in a situation that um, seems to defy our attempts to fix it. Um, but when you go back and <laughs> that say, a nice way to put it. <laughs> um, you know, what is the originating moment of that? That's when yeah. we run into a lot of problems. And, and different theologians, the Catholic theologian, uh, Teilhard de Chardin sort of said, you know, it, it, it's a part of the kind of fragility of the process of becoming that has created all life. Um, huh. And um, but then when you get to the level of when when it becomes conscious, then that fragility can can become disastrous. And but yeah, I, I think that we do have to sort of give up uh, this idea that um, there was this moment when literally the physical cosmos changed, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, which a lot of Christians still believe. Um, yeah, I, 